Looking back on the second grade, I like to think it was at least partly scientific curiosity that made me chase after that kiss. But to be honest, it was probably Mulder's blue eyes. All through the second and third grades, I couldn't seem to stop myself from following him, from sitting by him, from just wanting to be near him. By the fourth grade, I'd learned to, I'd learned to conquer myself. The sight of him, the thought of him, still sent my heart humming, but my legs didn't actually chase after him anymore. I just watched and thought and dreamed. Then, in the fifth grade, Shelley Stolz came into the picture. Shelley Stolz in a ninny is a ninny, a whiny, gossipy, backstabbing ninny who says one thing to one person and the opposite to another. Now that we're in junior high, she's just undis she's the undisputed diva of drama. But even back in elementary school, she knew how to put on a perk put on a performance. Especially when it came to PE, I never once saw her run, la run, run laps or do calisthenics. Instead, she'd go into her delicate act, claiming her body would absolutely collapse from the strain if she ran or jumped or stretched. It worked. Every year, she'd bring in some note, some note and be sure to swoon a little for a little for the teacher the first few days of the year. After which she'd be excused from anything that required muscles. She never even put up her own chair at the end of the day. The only muscles she exer she exercised regularly were the ones around her mouth, and those she worked worked out nonstop. If there was an Olympic contest worth talking. Shelly Stoltz would sweep the event. Well, she'd at least win the gold and silver, one medal for each side of her mouth. What bothered me about it? What bothered me about it was not the fact that she got out of PE, who'd won her on their team anyway. What bothered me about it was that anyone who bothered to look would know that it wasn't as asthma or weak ankles or her being delicate that was stopping her. It was her hair. She had mountains of it, twisted this way or that, clipped or beaded, braided or swerved. Her ponytails rivaled the ones on carousel horses, and on the days she let it all hang down, she sort of shimmy and cuddled inside it like it was a blanket. So. That practically all of all you saw of her face were her nose. No, so that practically all you saw of her face was her nose. Good luck playing first scare with a blanket over your head. My solution to Charlie's thoughts was to ignore her, which worked just dandy until about halfway through the fifth grade when I saw her holding hands with Bryce, my Bryce. The one who was still embarrassed over holding my hand two days before the second grade. The one who was still too shy to say much more than hello to me. The one who was still walking around with my first kiss. How could Shelly have warmed her hand into his? That, that pushy little princess had no, had no business hanging on to him like that. Bryce looked over his shoulder from time to time as they walked along, and he was looking at me. My first thought was that he was telling me he was sorry. That then it dawned on me he needed my help. Absolutely. That's what it had to be. Jelly Stoltz was too delicate to shake off, too sorry to be pushed away. She'd unravel, unravel and start sniffling and oh, how embarrassing that would be for him. No, this wasn't a job a boy could do gracefully. This was a job for a girl. I didn't even bother checking around for other candidates. I had heard of him in two seconds flat. Bryce ran away the minute he was free, but not Shelley. Oh, no, no, no. <clears throat> she came at me. 
scratching and pulling and twisting anything she could get her hands on, telling me that Bryce was hers and there was no way she was letting him go. How delicate. I was hoping for hers of teachers to appear so they could so they could see the rear shallow stalls in action. But it was too late by the time anyone arrived on the scene. I had Fluffy in a headlock and her arm twisted back in a hammerlock. And no amount of her squawking or scratching was gonna get me to unlock her until the teacher arrived. In the end, Shirley went home early with a bad case of most of hair. While I told my side of things to, be, to the principal, Mrs. Schurch is a sturdy lady who probably secretly appreciates the value of a swift kick well placed. And although she, she told me that it would be better if I let other people work out their own dilemmas, she definitely understood about Shelley's tools and her hair and told me she was glad I had, I'd had the self-control to do nothing more than restrain her. Shelley was back the next day with a head full of braids. And of course, she got everybody whispering about me, but I just ignored them. The fast spoke for themselves. Bryce didn't go anywhere near her for the rest of the year. That's not to say that Bryce held my hand after that. But he did start started being a little friendlier to me, especially in the sixth grade, after Mr. Martins sat us right next to each other in the third row back. Sitting next to Bryce was nice. He was nice. He'd say hi Julie to me every morning. And once in a while, I'd catch him looking my way. He'd always blush and go back to his own work. And I couldn't help but smile. He was so shy and so cute. We talked to each other more too, especially after Mr. Martins moved me behind them. Mr. Martins had detention policy, policy about spelling, where if you missed more than seven out of seven out of twenty-five words, you had you had to stand you had to spend lunch inside with them, writing your words over and over and over again. The pressure of detention made Bryce panic. And even though it bothered my conscience, <clears throat> I'd lean in and whisper answers to him, hoping that maybe I could spend lunch with him instead. His hair smelled like watermelon, and his earlobes had fuzz, soft blonde fuzz. And I wondered about that. How does a boy with, with such black hair wind up with blonde ear fuzz? What's he doing there anyway? I checked my own earlobes in the mirror but couldn't find much of anything on them and I didn't spot any on other people's either. I thought about asking Mr. Martins about earlobe fuzz when we were discussing evolution in science, but I didn't. Instead, I spent, I spent, the, I spent the year whispering spelling words, sniffing watermelon, and wondering if I was ever gonna get my kiss.